Welcome to Media Mosaics, our videos aim to inform and inspire. In this video, we will delve into the topic of comparing prices across different cruise lines. We encourage you to subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts in the comments. So, you want to take a cruise and have started searching the internet. You are now inundated with so many different cruise lines and deals. How can you possibly decide which one is right for you and most cost-effective for your budget? Often, would-be cruisers are enticed by a low price for a cabin, thinking they have come across the deal of the year. However, there are many elements often hidden within that cabin price, as well as excluded from it, that you must consider. Our first suggestion is to start your search with a total budget per person, or for the total number of people you are cruising with. This should be based on the number of nights, not days, of the cruise. Think of cruise pricing similarly to hotel stays calculated by night rather than day. What does your budget allow per person or in total for the cruise vacation? Cruise ships and itineraries are rarely, if ever, apples to apples in pricing. You will soon see that many elements should factor into your decision to book a cruise. Some elements are openly shared on a cruise line's website, while others require more digging to find and assess their costs. Let's first look at the differences between the different types of cruise lines. You truly can have a budget holiday on a cruise ship if you don't want or care about certain inclusions and amenities. We are not suggesting that you cannot find a great deal out there because you can, but it all depends on what amenities are important to you and your travel companions. Cruise lines offer a range of luxury levels to cater to different preferences and budgets. Some cruise lines are more mass market and sometimes considered to be party ships. Some cruise lines allow children, some do not. Some cruise lines offer voyages that are more low-key and high service without all the extras such as water slides and casinos. The distinctions between these levels can vary, but generally, cruise lines are categorized into the following classes of luxury. Contemporary mass market cruises. These cruise lines typically cater to a broad audience, including children and families, and sail very large ships accommodating 2,500 to 5,000 or more passengers. These cruise lines offer a variety of amenities such as multiple pools, nightclubs, entertainment venues, bars, a wide variety of restaurants, pools, water slides and casinos. These cruise lines and itineraries are more like an all-inclusive land resort where your basic accommodation and food needs are met under the one cabin price. Note here that we have indicated your basic food and accommodation needs are met under the cabin price as often other cruise amenities such as shore excursions, Wi-Fi and other basic services are extra. These cruise lines, however, do not offer the same level of personalized service or upscale offerings as luxury lines, and if they do, then these services and amenities come at a handsome price above your basic cabin price. Examples of the cruise lines that fall in this category are Carnival Cruise Line, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian Cruise Line. Premium Cruises Premium cruise lines offer a step up in terms of service, dining, and amenities compared to mass market lines. They often have a more refined atmosphere and may include perks like more spacious cabins, better dining options, and enhanced entertainment. These cruise lines still typically have a specific appeal to families, but with upgraded services available at a reasonable price. You may find that these cruise lines offer a slightly more elegant experience with relaxed voyages that include enrichment programs and more sophisticated culinary experiences. Examples of the cruise lines that fall into this category are Celebrity Cruises, Princess Cruises, and Holland America Line. Upper Premium or Deluxe Cruises Positioned between premium and luxury, upper premium or deluxe cruise lines provide a more elevated experience than the mass market cruise lines. These lines typically boast a more luxurious decor and atmosphere, with elevated dining options and often more inclusions in the basic cabin fare. These cruise lines focus on quality service, gourmet dining, and more intimate surroundings. These ships are often smaller with guest counts under 1,200. Often you will find when you dig into the cabin price on these cruise lines that many more amenities are included in the cabin price that you are paying extra for on the mass market or premium lines. Examples of cruise lines that fall into this category are Oceania Cruises, Azamara, and Viking Ocean Cruises. Luxury Cruises Luxury cruise lines are a step up again from premium or deluxe cruise lines and offer a high level of personalized service, exquisite dining, and upscale accommodations. 
These cruisers often feature even smaller ships than the upper premium lines, exclusive itineraries, and more inclusive amenities, such as shore excursions and beverages. Examples of cruise lines that fall into this category are Regent Seven Seas, Seabourn, and Crystal Cruises. Ultra-luxury cruises. The pinnacle of luxury cruising, ultra-luxury cruise lines provide the most opulent experiences. These cruises typically have the highest crew-to-passenger ratios, top-tier dining, exclusive shore excursions, and all-inclusive offerings. Examples of cruise lines that fall into this category are Silver Sea Cruises, the Ritz-Carlton Yacht Collection, and Sea Dream Yacht Club. As you move through the different levels of cruise experiences that are available, you might immediately look at the price of a premium cruise against a mass market cruise and think that the price of the premium cruise line is out of your budget. But is it? This depends. Are you looking for a basic cabin and then spend your days at the pool and eating at the buffet? Are you okay without having Wi-Fi included in your fare? Are you going to pay port taxes and excursion fees in every port? Or do you want the option of an included excursion in every port that is designed for your best value? Do you want beer and wine included with your meals? Or are you willing to pay for drinks as you consume them? Do you feel that specialty coffees and soft drinks should be included? Or are you willing to pay for these as extras? All of these things go into deciding what cruise line and itinerary to go with. Are you looking for a large party experience with lots of nightlife options or are you looking for an experience that is enriched with lectures of your destinations and food inspired by your cruise itinerary? Do you care if the cruise you pick means sharing the ship's facilities with 3,000 or 5,000 or more guests? Do you care if the cruise line allows children? Are you looking for a truly peaceful getaway where you can reflect on life in total peace and quiet? These are all things to consider and they all factor into the price that you will pay. It's essential for travelers to carefully consider their preferences, expectations, and budget when choosing a cruise line. Luxury levels can vary within each category, and personal priorities may influence the choice of a specific cruise line. Reading reviews, consulting with travel agents, and researching each cruise line's offerings will help you find the luxury level that aligns with your cruise expectations. There are also many social media sites and discussion communities that focus on cruise vacations where you can read reviews, ask questions in real time, and get answers from people who actually have been on that same ship and itinerary. The cruise lines that have been named here by luxury level are named in a very generalist way to each category. Some people may not agree with how we have categorized different cruise lines, but again, we are defining them in a very generalist way. Even mass market cruise lines can offer exclusive areas of the ship with services up to and including suites with butler service, exclusive dining, and beyond. This is one of the reasons that you must really research what you are paying for, and if you are comparing, you must break down the categories that are important to you and that you are ultimately comparing. Starting with some of the upper premium to deluxe lines, they may not offer family cruising with children under a certain age. This may be a consideration when you are price comparing. When you move up the luxury ladder of cruise lines, you will find that more amenities are included in the cruise fare, making price comparison increasingly difficult, especially if you're only looking at cabin prices. The other element of comparing price is duration of cruise and the itinerary. This alone makes the comparison very difficult. For instance, you may be looking at two competing cruise itineraries that each do a Western Mediterranean cruise. But one cruise is 8 days and the other is 11 days and although there are some ports that both cruise lines dock at, there are differences to other ports. As well, either of the two itineraries may have sea days where there is no port. These factors all have to come into your comparative equation, but you will quickly see that there is a lack of apples to apples in most of these comparisons. Many future cruises are taken in by the seemingly cheap fares of the mass market cruise lines. They become wowed by the pictures of the ship and the knowledge that there are multiple restaurants and so many amenities. What is often the price shock is that the cruise fare that you see initially only covers your cabin. Wi-Fi, an essential tool today, may cost you a significant amount daily on top of the cruise fare. Many of the restaurants are extra cost to dine in. Items as simple as soft drinks and coffee may cost you additional money daily. You may have to book every shore excursion as an extra cost and also pay port and docking fees. Also, don't forget about crew gratuities as these can be an included cost 
or an additional cost that hits your bill at the end of the cruise, and be aware that gratuities are per person and not just for the cabin. There may be cost to use the spa services, the gym, or other services that you may take for granted as included. Onboard selling is another area where mass market cruise lines lure you into spending more money. Casinos are another area of income for mass market cruise lines and often you will not find a casino on a ship that is premium or above. All in all, when you compare at the end of the day, you may be paying as much or more on a mass market line than a mid-level luxury line may cost. If you price a mid-level luxury line, you may find that you have the following included in your cabin base fare. Unlimited Wi-Fi. Unlimited beer and wine with lunch and dinner. Soft drinks, specialty coffee and teas included. Port fees. Included excursion in every port. Transfers from the airport to the ship and back at the end of the cruise. Some specialty restaurants by reservation, but no additional cost. Use of thermal spa and gym at no additional cost. Some may include an expanded alcohol and beverage package at no cost. So to recap, it is not enough to look at only cabin price to decide if you're getting the best value for your money when you're picking a cruise line and pricing a cruise. You may have to call the reservations department of a cruise line or have your travel agent verify the following information. But the questions to ask yourself as you are gathering information are, other than the cabin, what is included in the price of the cabin? Does this cruise line include excursions or if not, what will excursions cost per person per port? What is the cost of Wi-Fi daily per person? What is the cost of soft drinks, coffee and tea on a daily basis? Will I have to pay port fees? Is there a fee for the gym or thermal spa? What will my cost of alcohol be either paying for a package or paying per drink? Are gratuities included or is there an additional charge for gratuities? Will the cruise line provide transfers from the airport to the ship and back to the airport after the cruise? Is airfare included or discounted if booked with the cruise, or do I have to book my airfare myself? What is the cancellation policy, and what penalties exist if I must cancel? Does the cruise line offer travel insurance, and how much will that cost be? What is the deposit, and is the deposit refundable or non-refundable? What are the final payment dates for this cruise? Next, you must look at the itinerary and decide if it is comparable, and what is the total number of nights of the cruise itinerary? If you happen to find two cruise lines offering the exact itinerary and the exact number of nights, you will find it easier to compare, but rarely does this happen. Our suggestion is that once you have calculated all your costs for one, two, or three separate cruise options, then you would divide that total cost by the number of nights of the cruise. This is the number that you compare. This is also the number that you should budget towards before you start looking at cruises as mentioned in the start of this clip. Don't forget that airfare is usually not included in your cruise fare and will be an additional cost. You must always get to the cruise port of embarkation and home from the port of debarkation. Cruise lines don't make it easy for you to price compare, but if you know your budget and what you want and need in amenities, you can create a well thought out price comparison. Just remember that it is almost impossible to price compare apples to apples when comparing cruises, and the best way for you to decide value is your cost per night and your research into what you get for that cost per night. Thank you for watching a Media Mosaics video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Your support means a lot. Stay tuned for more exciting content.